Hi there, and welcome to another View from the Other Side. So um, before I dive into our topic, which is on empty chairs, which um, is a reflection of this current season, the holiday season, in light of everything that's been happening the last couple of, year, couple of years, um, I just wanted to dive into something lighthearted, first of all. So a couple of months ago, I did a video where I shared a story about a Kosmoski tongue drum that I had bought. And the story was about a synchronicity of how I really wanted to buy a tongue drum and how my assistant Abby had just bought one for her husband and told me that I had to buy this particular brand, Kosmoski, which is a Russian brand. So I started researching them online. And so you must check out that, that video. It's from a couple of months ago. Where I, um, and so I spoke about online how there was no stores that actually sell this drum. I had to buy it on, online, but I was reluctant to order one online without hearing them because there were so many different kinds. And then literally, as I put it out there into the universe that I wanted to listen to those drums before buying them, I wanted to actually try them. In other words, I wanted to try it. I walked into this um, lovely, uh, well, this crystal place. I, it's not a store, but it's um, this couple, Diana and Alex, who open out their homes selling crystals, South Bay salts. And uh, I walked into there and then suddenly she said to me, would you by any chance be interested in buying a drum? And she had this whole range of Kosmoski drums. And I was like, oh my God, it's Kosmoski. It's just what I wanted to listen to. And so I bought a drum from there, from them. And when I showed it, when I shared that story of the synchronicity of putting it out there, and I shared that story and I showed that drum on the video, what happened is that the Kosmoski people reached out to me after that video went out and uh, thanked me for sharing my story of the Kosmoski. And they said, that suddenly people were ordering drums from them. So I was really pleased. I started to discover that every drum is handmade. Kosmoski is owned by one guy named Alexander and he's a um, very small business. They hand make every drum. So every drum is unique and uh, I get nothing from talking about it. It was just my excitement. And he has a wife and a little toddler. And uh, so I was like really happy to support. I love supporting small businesses. But anyway, what happened is that this week I received a huge surprise in the mail where Alex sent me a beautiful, unique drum that was made just for me. He said in my colors, the colors which he discovered on my website. And I don't know if the video does it justice, but I un unveiled it, I unpackaged it. It was like so beautiful. And, and the thing is that I just had to show it off here because life can actually be really magical sometimes. Um, if, you, if you want it to be magical, it really can. And one of the reasons I put out the videos I do and write the books I do and share what I do is because really there is another way of looking at life that can actually make it magical. And so I just wanted to share this with you. And Alex said to me that if any of you want a Kosmoski drum, just mention that you learned about it from me and he will extend a little discount for you. Also, um, he has made two drums like this, one for me and one as a giveaway. So next year in January, we're going to be figuring out a competition and somebody is going to get another drum that looks and sounds exactly like this. These are absolutely magical. What I love about them is that they sound otherworldly. They sound like the sound sounds like it's coming from outer space. Anyway, there you have it. And again, I, I don't get anything from it. It's just, um, I just love the drums. I love Alex. I've been communicating with him. Great guy. They're very, very, um, yeah, they're just really great people. Um, in light of the season right now, um, 
Interestingly, in the last few months, I have been noticing people have been writing to me and mentioning to me that they have been, um, there have been people who have, a lot of people who have crossed over in the last, particularly in the last few months. And that's been interesting to me. And for those of you who follow me and follow my videos and, and watch my content, you'll know that I don't believe that death is random. And I think there's a reason why people are kind of choosing to check out right now. I don't think death is random, but um, it's always challenging for the people who are left behind. And it's usually hardest during the holiday season. So what I wanted to remind people is that your loved ones are still here. They're still with you. And you just have to call on them. You just have to visualize them. You can still speak to them. And remember, take care of yourself. If it feels harder during the holidays, take even more care of yourself. When we decided to call this particular um, video Empty Chairs, we weren't just referring to our deceased loved ones. During this time, what, um, I'm also hearing about a lot of families that are facing conflict and divisiveness because um, people have conflicting views. So first, it's the conflicting views where families have kind of um, fallen out with each other because of the different views on, on the vaccine and on the cause of COVID and so on. So families have actually completely split. I, I know of a few families that have. I know of people being shamed for their views and not being welcomed during the holidays and not being welcomed to the table. Um, so there's, there's that. Or people just not being invited. And that can be really hurtful. So I wanted to just touch on how to deal with those kinds of feelings. So there's both. There's the empty chairs from those who have actually crossed over and there's the empty chairs because we have fallen out with our family members or we just don't feel like going because the views, are, the divide is just too big right now. Um, so first of all, uh, if you're dealing with the death of a family member, um, I would really suggest that you do whatever it takes to take care of yourself and if you are still grieving, there is somebody I highly recommend and I will recommend him again. His name is David Kessler. He is an online grief counselor. He organizes grief groups. He's very into the same kind of work I am. He knows you can connect with your loved ones from the other side and uh, he connects people together. So he is fantastic, great guy. I know him personally. Tell him I recommended um, that I recommended him when you find him through his website. His website, I believe, is called grief.com, but you can look him up, David Kessler. Um, on dealing with the holidays and dealing with the divide amongst people, the first thing I want you to know is that if you have not been, if you are not being invited, or if you have family members that are refusing to come over for whatever reason, maybe it's because you're not, you know, some of you are not vaccinated and you've chosen not to be vaccinated. And because of that, you're not feeling welcomed or people are not coming over or coming near you because you've not been vaccinated. Um, the first thing I want you to know is don't take it personally. Don't take it personally. Everybody who is reacting right now, whether it's reacting to, the, uh, to being unvaccinated or re reacting to being vaccinated or reacting to the illness itself, remember, everybody is doing it from their own fear, from their own understanding of what is going on. What is really sad at this moment is that we don't have a single... Um, conclusion or a single point of understanding. Everybody is convinced that what they understand is the truth. And, and so the conflict is each person is as convinced of their own truth, but their truth differs from everybody else's truth. We live in a very different time right now. 
It's not like back in, you know, like even 20, 30, 40 years ago. When you were a kid, depending how old you were, but when you were a kid, um, or, you know, you, all your neighbors and everybody in your area, this was before the internet came, up, came out, um, before the advent of the internet, Everybody in your field, in your surrounding area, was in tune with the same news that you were. They had, um, they had access to the same information that you had. So everybody in your neighborhood had the same newspapers delivered to their door. And so you had this, the morning paper and the evening paper and your neighbor had the morning paper and the evening paper and, and the people down the street and people in the next town. Everybody got the same newspaper. So you were all getting the same news. You were all being fed the same information. So when you talked to your neighbors or if you were sitting on the bus and you're talking to people in the bus, you went to work and you talked to people at work, you were talking about the same news, the same stuff happening. Today, it's not the same thing anymore. People are tuned in to different news and they're tuned in online. And when you research one thing, what happens is the algorithms gives you more of the same thing. So you could be researching one thing, one viewpoint, and your neighbor could be researching a different viewpoint that is completely the opposite of your viewpoint. And I mean 180 degrees completely the opposite. In fact, you could be researching something that says elephants are pink and your neighbor would be researching something that says elephants are green. And what happens is the algorithms of the internet will pick up the fact that you believe elephants are pink and they're going to, and the algorithms are going to send you everything to confirm that elephants are pink. They're going to give you more and more stories that confirm what you believe in. And your neighbor who believes elephants are green, they're going to get more and more stories from the internet. And the algorithms are going to make sure that they get more and more stories that confirm elephants are green. And whatever channels you subscribe to, whatever social media you've, um, you've decided to follow, whatever, whoever you decided to follow, what's going to happen is that the, the people with similar views to you are what you are going to get more of. So what ends up happening is we, each of us live in this bubble of just, if we're on the internet all the time, we live in this bubble of just having our own views confirmed over and over and over again. And our view could be completely opposite to the view of the person that lives next door or the person that lives down the street. And it's not that there are just two views, there are multiple views and everybody's views are just being confirmed by the internet. So this is what happens today as opposed to many years ago. So everybody is equally convinced of their own view and because of that, we end up shaming people whose views don't align with ours. We kind of go, God, you're really stupid and, and you're really dumb and how can you not see this? And so the person who's glued to their views and watching uh, and, and glued to the internet and their views being confirmed, they kind of think, this is so obvious, why don't they see it? But everybody's doing that right now. So many people are doing that. So what I want to ask you is that are you someone who wants to get your views heard? Are you someone who wants to be right? Are you someone who's trying to convince everyone of your views? Or are you someone who just wants to connect with your family? And I'm not saying one way is right or one way is wrong, but what I am saying is you kind of have to decide what it is you want. If it's more important to you to be right, and if it's more important to you to be heard, if it's more important to you to convince everyone of your views, then be prepared that you will face conflict. You will alienate people from you because there's so many views right now. So just be prepared. And if you're okay with that, that's fine. But if you are someone that wants community and connection, then you're going to have to have a different approach. Um, I'm someone that looks for community and connection. 
I'm someone who actually believes that, that really, no matter what your view, our need to convince everyone else comes from a place of fear. And, and if we, and if, if we, um, if we really know our own truth, we don't need to convince everyone else. Usually our need to convince everyone else comes from a place of being unsure uh, or, or feeling a little bit insecure in our own truth and needing confirmation. But um, whatever your reasons, also I'm sure there are people with very noble reasons where you feel that your truth helps people and so you need to convince everyone because you feel you're helping people. I get that and I understand that too. But if at this time your feelings are that you want the connection, you want the, you want the community, then my personal recommendation is that you stay out of the, un um, the, you stay away from trying to convince people of your truth. And so one of the things to do is to, uh, there are ways that you can gracefully bow out from uncom uncomfortable conversations. At the same time, do not be ashamed or embarrassed about your own personal views. Don't be ashamed of them. Don't be embarrassed about them. But make it clear to the people around you that you love them. So let me tell you what I do in these situations. First of all, I make sure that I tell everybody around me that I don't discriminate. And I really don't. I don't care about what your views are. I don't care whether you've been vaccinated or not vaccinated. You're a person with a soul. I died and came back and I know we're all going to die someday. I know we're all souls. I know that we all come from spirit and we go back to spirit. So I want to connect with you on the soul level, on the spirit level. I want to connect with who you are and what inform I want to know what informs your thinking um, I'm more interested in knowing what um, what floats your boat what makes you tick who are you um, what drives you what makes you happy what is your passion I'm more interested in all of that and I want to know like um, you know I want to get to know you as a soul and a person that's how I feel about my community all this other stuff is just surface stuff. It's just physical stuff. I want to really know, get to know you. And that is the, that's the aim of what I recommend or the view with which um, I recommend that you enter these kinds of events or family events with if you want to really cut through the surface and cut through the conflict. And most people will find that very welcoming and endearing. The other thing I recommend is that if you are accepting an invitation, I would recommend that you prepare yourself. So you think in your head before going or you visualize, especially if you know that there are going to be people there who have very strong views that um, oppose your own views. What I would do if it were me, I would visualize conversations in my own head as if I am talking to their soul. This is the part that's important. This is the part that's important. I wanted to repeat that. Visualize not your physical self talking to their physical self. And, and I swear this works because I've tried it so many times and it really works. If there is somebody that you, that you suspect you, you may have a conflict with, visualize that person's soul or higher self and your soul or higher self having a conversation with each other. And what is it that your soul wants them to know? And what is it that you want to hear from their soul? Visualize that before you're with them face to face. Um, and what will happen is that when you go to the event, to the venue, you will find that either the conversation that you were hoping would never happen won't happen because you'll have visualized your souls talking it out. Make sure that when you visualize the souls talking to each other, that the outcome is one that makes you feel good because it's your visualization. 
you have control over what the outcome is. So you will visualize an outcome that is successful and makes you feel good. The visualizing of the souls meeting each other works. Um, I'm going to share a secret with you. Um, I did an event in Sedona very recently and, and we filled the room. There were 200 people in the room. And before I went there, because I know how divided people are on, on this topic, and I personally didn't care if the people in the room were vaccinated or not. I don't discriminate. I have love and respect uh, for everybody equally. As I said, we're all souls. We're all going to die. Um, and, and we're all driven by our own beliefs and by our own fears. And I visualized everything in terms of if everybody was to confront me regarding the vaccine topic. And I actually visualized the most amazing outcome. I visualized that everybody would be able to rise above that topic, uh, above that subject and see everybody else as fellow souls, regardless of their choices. But I was prepared that should anybody have an issue, um, this is how I would deal with it. And I saw everybody at their soul level. And I did the event four full days, lots of Q and A's, nobody even brought up the topic. And I know it's because um, that's what I set at a soul level. When we operate from the soul level, when we actually think of ourselves as souls and think of everybody around us as souls, then it changes the game, it really does. But when you are always thinking of other people as just physical beings and you have hostility towards them and you're only focused on the hostility they have towards you, then we stay at that level and we deal with people at that level and we attract conflict at that level. But when you are able to see that person as a soul and when you're able to see that person as operating from their own beliefs and their own fears, and what drives their own thinking, but you see that they're actually a soul um, and you are allowing your soul to connect with their soul, you take the relationship to a whole different level. And that's what I invite you to do. And I also want you to remember that you always have the choice to turn down invitations if you're worried that it, you might be in an uncomfortable situation because you know that people have a completely different view from you. Don't hesitate to turn down invitations. You can gracefully bow out and say no. And you can always say that you're not feeling comfortable being around people at this time, but always say, it's not personal. I love you guys. I love you so much. It's just a personal choice I need to make at this time. I would prefer to be alone um, I don't want to um, mingle with people at this time. So there are always graceful ways of bowing out. And um, if people choose not to come to your event and you're the one hosting, again, don't take it personally, even if they have, even if they have not been as graceful about turning you down. Uh, again, remember, if they've chosen not to come, and they're not as graceful about it, they're coming at it from their own fear and their own belief, so don't take it personally. Uh, so I just wanted to remind you of all these, and, and remember you don't need to defend who you are, you are who you are, we're all who we are, and all we can do is be as, be as you as you can be, and I can be as me as I can be. You are a soul, you're expressing through this physical body, allow your soul to shine through. Um, and if you want to avoid conflict and you just want to connect, one definite way to do that is stay out of judgment. Stay out of judging other people for their views and their choices. That's a sure way to avoid conflict. So thank you so much for tuning in today. I just wanted to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. And I am going to be back next week for another episode of View from the Other Side. Have a wonderful holiday season. Bye.